When the Union Pacific Railroad from the east linked rails with the Central Pacific from the west, the fabulous northern empire of the Golden Gate was born. Built strong by steel-muscled men and spiked with solid California gold, it began to enrich the young and growing nation. Gold. In 1848, gold was the word for California. It lured men in an explosion of migration from the ends of the earth with pick, pan, long tom, and cradle. Gold was the key that unlocked the storehouse of wealth that lay behind the Sierra barrier. Miners burst open the mother load from Mariposa to Coloma, seeking the golden fleece. James Marshall's lucky find in the tail race of John Sutter's new sawmill on the American River can still be measured in terms of the romance of the gold rush. In its old buildings, in its picturesque names, its ghost-haunted town. of the noisy, happy-go-lucky days of the gold rush still linger in the Sierra mining country in annual celebrations such as the frog jump, which keep alive whimsical traditions started by men like Mark Twain. Each year at Angel's Camp, jumping frogs from everywhere are assembled to try to match the exploits of Mark Twain's champion, Daniel Webster. Each frog is allowed three jumps, measured by bewhiskered judges. And sometimes it's a little difficult to tell the frog from his excited, over-enthusiastic owner. But these typical early American shenanigans hampered by a quieter existence, brought long ago by the Spaniards to California's first capital at Monterey. A peaceful, sunny way of life that mirrored the Spaniards' mind. And names famous in the exploits, Quistadores, still sound in the homes and gardens of Soberanes, Abrego, Serrano, and Arruejo. California's first theater opened in 1848 in Monterey, still produces the melodrama that thrilled and chilled the 49ers. Today, the Golden Capitol Dome at Sacramento looks down on a rich heritage, both European and American. Wineries in the Napa, Sonoma, and San Joaquin Valleys with their imported stained glass windows and their carved ripening casts lend a unique air of old world charm found nowhere else in America. The wines produced from Northern California's wide vineyards recall vintage traditions that were old long before men planted grapes in this new deep soiled land. Good Burgundy is here and Chablis, Riesling, Moselle and Pinot Noir Methods used in the grape harvest, women pickers using curved blade knives, are as old as the days of Abraham. Yet old-fashioned horse-drawn sledges lead directly to modern conveying systems that carry the grapes to the wine presses. Northern vineyards need only rainfall to water their vines. But central California vineyards and nearly all of California's other crops depend upon irrigation. Water is today's California gold. Water, millions of acre feet, held in reserve for future use by gigantic dams like the Shasta. Water that finds its source in the melting snow and ever-flowing springs of 14,000-foot Mount Shasta. And her sister peak, Mount Lassen, in Mount Lassen National Park, the only active volcano in the continental United States. Water accounts, too, for the lush growth of redwood the giant sequoia sempervirens that grow in Northern California in a strip along the coast and form the basis of another great California industry. These awesome trees, 250 feet high and up to 18 feet in diameter, many of which were seedlings before the birth of Christ, 
provide lumber for buildings around the world, given a man with an eight-foot power saw and a 200-foot giant immune to all hazards except old age and men falls to earth. Within minutes, the tree is cut into sections and dragged to the mill. Among the fine natural woods, redwood lumber is one of the most beautiful and long-lasting building materials found in this country. While West Coast homes are sometimes constructed of redwood, it is used primarily in the East for interior finish, much esteemed for its beautiful grain and unusual natural color. And finally, that giant which stood majestically tall in the ancient forest disappears in a lumber yard beside the Pacific. The restless Pacific, which provides Westerners with fresh, juicy California oysters between September and April. And year-round is the fishing ground for the gourmet menus found in the kitchens of Northern California's famous Seacoast restaurants. And sometimes is a point of serious discussion among the seagulls. Thousands of sport-loving Californians prefer to catch their own dinners. Here at the mouth of the Klamath River, when the salmon are running, the air is filled with the low mutter of idling outboard motors and the creak of oarlocks, as the sport fishermen try their luck against one of the fightingest fish in the sea. Luck that unfortunately doesn't hold in a rotten net. Whoops! There, that's better. But lucky or not, who cares? It's fun to just fish. In the cool coastal valley of the Salinas River, the vast ranchos where the early Spanish rancheros once grazed their herds have been adapted to green farming. In harvest season, hundreds of carloads of crisp lettuce race across the United States toward the salad bowls of the nation. and root vegetables filled with California sunshine flourish astonishingly. The climate of the seacoast and its adjacent valleys is so like that of certain parts of the Mediterranean that immigrants such as the artichoke grow better here than in their homeland. Inland, lying at the foot of the great Sierras, is California's rice bowl of the Sacramento and San Joaquin Valley. From seeding to harvest, rice farming is one of the most mechanized agricultural procedures in the Golden Gate Empire. A procedure that has enabled California to rank with the largest rice producing states of the Union. dotted slopes of the coast range provide grass for beef cattle. And when the winter snow has left the lofty Sierras, the high meadows offer lush pastures. In winter, sheep graze in verdant, sun-filled lowlands. But the empire of the Golden Gate is much more than commercial fishing, lumbering, cattle raising, farming, and the tourist business. It's the realization of man's most romantic and adventurous dream. Highways here lead to unexpected castles high on rugged hills. The Hearst Castle, a gleaming apex on the enchanted hills south of Monterey, is a state historical monument that can be described only as fabulous. Treasures from Italy, France, ancient Egypt, Greece, and the whole wide world have been assembled here to concentrate in miniature the great artists and cultural achievements of mankind. Broad stone stairways sweep up from gardens and pools, surrounded by buildings and statuary that once graced the villas and homes of Romans and Greeks long ago.
And from the enchanted hills, this magnificent monument looks down on the rugged shore of the blue Pacific. Some of the most spectacular scenery in the world is found where Northern California meets the sea. Bay, the unique Monterey Cypress is blown into fantastic shapes by the wind. In the Monterey Big Sur area is found the playful sea otter, an animal not long ago believed extinct. And if wildflowers are your delight, spring from the Alpine Sierra to the Roaring Surf is a burst of glorious color. Here in the once sleepy Spanish town of Monterey, the handiwork of men has added an appropriate touch of New England charm to a magnificent meeting of sea, land, and sky. Monterey Harbor, the first landing place of the Conquistadores in Northern California, has served as a haven for men of the sea for nearly 400 years. The sea, the eternal, ever restless sea, has been the inspiration for writers since Robert Louis Stevenson wrote here. East from the sea in the busy haunts of men, lie the steep canyons and sharp crests of the flower-clad Sierra in Kings Canyon National Park. And only a few miles from the towering ramparts of Kings Canyon, hidden in the cathedral-like fastnesses of Sequoia National Park, is the quiet land of the big trees, the sequoias, including the champion of them all, the General Sherman tree, the largest tree on earth, and possibly the oldest living thing in all the world. Sierra Nevada is more than just a source of water and lumber and minerals to Northern Californians. It is also their playground. In the hundreds of streams and lakes of this alpine wonderland, vacationers find sport and relaxation. The gradual up-tilting of the Sierra block, combined with the slow work of glaciers since the last ice age, has sculptured the tall granite mountains and awe-inspiring valleys of Yosemite National Park. And in the world-famous Yosemite Valley, ancient glaciers gouged out a narrow gorge, nearly a mile deep, leaving on each side hanging alpine valleys from which Yosemite's many waterfalls leap into space to join the Merced River below. Nevada Falls and Vernal. The Grand Yosemite Falls dropping in two stages, 1,750 feet.
from the eternal snow and ice of the towering granite peaks, over the sheer falls, and through the peaceful valleys, the water returns to the sea. through majestic Golden Gate, once the pathway for explorers, gold seekers, and settlers, the majestic city of San Francisco is a symbol of beauty and culture. San Francisco, youngest of the world's renowned cities, ranking with New York, Paris, and London. Exciting, vital, gracious, and rich, it is the goal of travelers, gourmets, and merchants from every continent. A big Japanese maru booming for the Golden Gate, outbound for Tokyo or Yokohama. And the luxury passenger ship Lurling, floating for a leisurely voyage to Hawaii. Ships from the east and west trade here, from the spice islands of the Indies to the industrial centers of today's Europe. Freighters from the Pacific Islands, Java, Singapore, Tahiti, and Fiji, from South America. The whole world plies the Golden Gate, a world served not too long ago by sailing ships, like the old Balclutha. Steel ships and American products, these are the ambassadors of goodwill from San Francisco to the rest of the world. Exotic products from foreign lands bring San Francisco a closer appreciation and understanding of her neighbors. Distances from faraway mysterious ports, once measured in terms of weeks and months in the days of sail, are now reduced to days. Perishable products, once the delight only of the world traveler, are now common on the tables of America, thanks to modern handling and controlled temperature refrigerated fast rail transportation. Now, if San Francisco should want additional praise as a great world port, the nearest Navy man will grin and tell you it's traditionally the best all-out liberty port on the seven seas, or any other place you might care to name. Here on the waterfront, San Francisco's colorful tradition is perhaps best known to the traveler at Fisherman's Wharf, where seafood is caught and cooked by the sons of fishermen's sons. Sidewalk merchants cater to tastes ranging from abalone to squid, or a piece of crisp bass, or freshly cooked crab hot from a steaming pot, or a giant spiny lobster late of the icy Pacific. The people of the Golden Gate Empire, from Monterey to Smith River, affectionately call San Francisco the city with a capital C. And they have good reason to love this many-faceted, vibrant, cosmopolitan city. Set like a jewel on seven hills by the bay, bordered on three sides by blue water, it is reminiscent of an isle in the Aegean, and its climate is Mediterranean too. But mainly, it is San Francisco. Attached houses like these in the Sunset District are typical. Downtown, the city exhibits a cyclorama of architectural styles. From the Green Dome City Hall and the Federal Reserve Bank, whose tall Greek columns flank Lower Sacramento Street, 
to modern American office buildings. Market Street, the east-west dividing line, is the favorite starting point for exploring expeditions that fan out all over the peninsula. Buying flowers at stands north of Market is a daily custom. Everybody wears a flower, especially the smartly dressed women who come to shop or to lunch in the heart of San Francisco's fashionable shopping district that surrounds the city's central meeting place, Union Square. And what other city can boast this unique form of transportation, the cable car, invented right here in San Francisco because it was the only thing that would carry a man up them ding-busted steep hills. And everybody gets off to help turn the darn thing around. Astonishing streets, steeper than a roller coaster, lead to the great man-made wonders of San Francisco, the bridges. They are the pulsing arteries that connect the Golden Gate Empire with its heart. The San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge carries all highway traffic from Oakland, Berkeley and beyond, from Sacramento, the Gold Country and the Sierra. Since the passing of the old ferry boats, this eight-mile-long bridge is the main access to San Francisco from the East Bay. Even more famous is the Golden Gate Bridge that leaps the strait from Marin County. This steel giant with 80,000 miles of steel wire in its main suspension cables leads in from the wine and lumber country and the Pacific Northwest. are spectacular gateways to unusual sights and color and excitement. Where but in San Francisco's Chinatown could you find old jade carvings being sold next door to lychee nut milkshakes? The Chinese, mainly from Canton, settled on Grant Avenue early in San Francisco history. And although they are among the most modern and forward-looking citizens, they have retained and still practice many of the beautiful old ceremonies brought to America by their forefathers. Ceremonies like this one of ritual prayer at the altar of a temple. Some of the fondest memories of the city recall San Francisco at night after the skyline has been painted gold by a Pacific sunset. Then, under the night sky, it puts on a bright new costume like a dancer before the footlights. Chinatown bursts into brilliant color and her pagodas rise from a lake of light filled with bustle and laughter.
Fisherman's Wharf is ready to serve its discriminating diners until the small hours of the morning. And San Franciscans, to whom good food is a part of good living, congregate in the city's famous restaurants. Dishes are prepared here by chefs whose sauces, salads, and meats bear the honored approval of their brother chefs in Europe. San Francisco, youngest of the renowned cities, of world reputation, stamped with a mixed culture from both East and West, and bearing on her seven hills the ultimate of charm and beauty. The rallying point of business, finance, and commerce and worldwide shipping. Guardian of the Western Gate. It is no wonder that the people of the Golden Gate Empire love their city with a fierceness that passes understanding, unless you have been there to see it for yourself. <laughs> 